Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Bante. Good morning, Bante. Good morning. Now we are going to start our Dhamma talk. Uh, we uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, we discussed uh, earlier uh, mindfulness of uh, the mindfulness of the body. The large tetrad of the mindfulness of body, uh, we said tranquilizing the body, bodily formations. He breathes in and breathes out. Or we say he trains thus, I shall breathe in, tranquilizing the body, bodily formations. He trains thus, I shall breathe out, tranquilizing the body formations. I mentioned uh, tranquilizing happens gradually. First breath becomes gross and then becomes subtler and subtler and subtler. And then you come to aware of the entire breath body. And then after that, the breath becomes extremely subtle. And that time, that at that stage, breath is very calm, relaxed and peaceful. That is called the tranquility. Tranquility. After tranquility, uh, we having overcome all the obstructions, I as I mentioned the other day, you come to a stage where feeling arises. This feeling is also a very subtle feeling, and it says in Pali. You can see on the screen, Piti Pati Sangvedi Asasi Samiti Sikhati. Piti Pati Sangvedi Asasi Samiti Sikhati. Sukha Pati Sangvedi Asasi Samiti Sikhati. Sukha Pati Sangvedi Asasi Samiti Sikhati. Chitta Sankhara Pati Sangvedi Asasi Samiti Sikhati. Chitta Sankhara Pati Sangvedi Asasi Samiti Sikhati. Pasambhayan Chitta Sankhara Asasi Samiti Sikhati. Pasambhayan Chitta Sankhara Asasi Samiti Sikhati. This is what it means. He trains thus. I shall breathe in experiencing rapture. He trains thus, I shall breathe out experiencing rapture. He trains thus, I shall breathe in experiencing pleasure. He trains thus, I shall breathe out experiencing pleasure. He trains thus, I shall breathe in, experience, experiencing mental formations. And he trains thus, I shall breathe out, experiencing the mental formations. He trains thus, I shall breathe in, tranquilizing the mental formations. He trains thus, I shall breathe out, tranquilizing the mental formations. Now breathe in and breathe out. We experiencing rapture. 
What is this rapture? It is called piety. Piety. This piety arises, as you remember, when the breath is very calm, subtle, peaceful, and tranquil. That is the stage you attain jhana, first jhana. In the first jhana, you experience rapture. You don't say in words, you just become aware of rapture. While being aware of that rapture, you breathe in, and while experiencing or being aware of rapture, you breathe out. Piti Patisangvedi Asasi Samiti Sikhati. Piti Patisangvedi Pasasi Samiti Sikhati. I shall breathe in experiencing rapture. I shall breathe out experiencing, breathe out experiencing rapture. So you are, you don't break, you don't interrupt your rapture. While breathing in, you are experiencing rapture. At that time, you don't say in words. If you say anything in words, this is rapture. Oh, I shall like, I shall train myself experiencing rapture, and so forth. If you say any word, you disturb your rapture. That is why he says he trains. The word trains also is important. It doesn't happen automatically, naturally. You have to train yourself doing it again and again, because the mind, as I mentioned at the beginning, is like wild animal. It wanders here and there, going to the past or to the future, through the sight, sound, smell, taste, touch and thought, through the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind. Or it may go to the future. And in addition, if you simply say, I shall breathe in experiencing rapture, you add more interruptions to your mind. And you don't experience rapture. And therefore, this is a very delicate training. And while training yourself thus, you breathe in, experiencing rapture. You breathe out, experiencing rapture. After rapture arises pleasure. Now, piety is one, sukha is another. Piety, the difference between these two, piety is in anticipation of what is ahead of you. A pleasure is experiencing what you anticipated. That is the difference. For instance, when you travel in a desert, you are tired, thirsty, dry, and looking for water. So you are anticipating some kind of place where you can get water. And then you see a person coming towards you with wet hair, wet clothes, fresh face, fresh eyes, dripping water. Then you might ask him, Mr. I am also traveling in this desert where there is no water. I am thirsty. You seem to be 
wet, dripping water. You seem to have quenched your thirst. What happened? He would tell you that he found an oasis, little pond or lake in the desert with fresh water. Having heard this and seeing this person, you anticipate in seeing that lake with fresh water and you move forward and this person might tell you if you continue to walk the way you are doing now you will come across this lake so with so he arouses anticipation and encourage him to move forward and then as he moves forward he can see birds flying towards certain place and then his rapture increases and he goes a little forward and then he can hear children playing, talking, laughing, jumping into water. So his rapture increases in anticipation of water and then sure enough he reached this pond or lake in the desert and then he immediately jump into it drink plenty of water if he finds lotus roots he wash it and eat it swim it he spends a lot of time in that water and comes out of the lake and sitting and or stretching his hands and legs on the bank of the lake, he relaxes. That is pleasure. That is pleasure. So rapture is happening in anticipation of pleasure. Now he enjoys pleasure relaxing, enjoying, having quenched his thirst, his tiredness is gone, he is completely relaxed. That is, that is pleasure. And therefore I mentioned earlier in another talk, your ordinary rapture and ordinary pleasure are different from this spiritual rapture and spiritual pleasure. This is called niramisa piti, niramisa sukha. Niramisa means unworldly, no greed, no hatred. Samisa is with greed. For instance, when you are in an ordinary state without jhana, without this experience, when you have joy or rapture, you will laugh, you will talk, you will kiss, hug, dance, and even cry of joy. Similarly, when you have pleasure, in ordinary state, you react the same way. But here, you see the way rapture and pleasure arisen in you through the process of peaceful breathing. In that breathing, there is nothing to jump up and down no excitement, everything becomes calmer and calmer and more and more relaxed and peaceful and therefore mind gains very good concentration. So for that you have to train, that is why 
it says he trains thus he trains thus i shall breathe in experiencing rapture bhiti padisang vedi asasi sami iti jigati i shall breathe out experience rapture while breathing in you don't use any word no love no talk nothing breathing out you don't do that except except just in uninterrupted rapture uninterrupted rapture we have overcome a lot of uh, hindrances and so forth earlier now none of these things in your way and then experience in pleasure you do the same thing you breathe in and breathe out and then you experience something else too now we are talking about the mindfulness of feeling mindfulness of feeling rapture is a feeling pleasure is a feeling and then he trains thus i shall breathe in experience in the mental formations he trains thus i shall breathe out experiencing the mental formations what is the mental formations that is called chitta sankara chitta sankara padisang vedi asasi sami iti sikkati chitta sankara padisang vedi pasasi sami iti sikkati chitta sankara is sanya vedana perceptions and feeling are called chitta sankara why are they called chitta sankara perception conditions the mind feeling conditions the mind when feeling arises perception arises when perception arises thought arises when thought arises desire arises when desire arises further thinking arises when further thinking arises uh it sustaining the further thinking arises so all this arise with the arising of feeling and perception and therefore they are called mental formations what are the mental formations feeling and perception so he trains thus i shall breathe in experiencing the mental formations at that time you experience the previous two kinds of feelings rapture and pleasure now you confirm that pleasure rapture and pleasure i mentioned rap uh, let me go back again to rapture i mentioned rapture arises as you move towards the ex- expectation expected object like pleasure it arises gradually step by step as you every step you go forward rapture increases therefore there are five kinds of raptures first kind of rapture is uh, very quick like uh, needle pricking not painful but pleasure then it increases uh, and it pervades your entire body and that as it increases you feel as you are up uh, you are lifting above the ground as it increases more you feel that you are floating in the air these are the states you experience when rapture 
gradually increases and then we have a pleasure. And this is a feeling and therefore experiencing mental formations meaning this kind of feeling. You know, feeling, you feel and mentally you perceive the feeling. Mental feeling, a perception. And therefore, mental formations mean feeling and perception. You mentally you feel, physically you feel, at the same time you perceive this feeling mentally. Experiencing mental formations, you breathe in and breathe in out. Then it becomes even more quiet, more subtle, more peaceful. So, Buddha said, he says thus, I shall breathe in tranquilizing the mental formations. He trains thus, I shall breathe out, tranquilizing the mental formations. So now, just like physical uh, tranquility, I mentioned in earlier uh, on the, uh, when I gave the talk on um, mindfulness of the body, uh, last part of the first tetrad, we mentioned tranquilizing the body. Here, we tranquilize the mental formations, feeling and perception. Uh, how we can tranquilize it? Without, when we use words, we disturb. We disturb our mind. As we are simply become developing our awareness, mindfulness, concentration. We don't use any word. That way gives the mind to experience this tranquility. So when, we, when you hear, read the word tranquilizing, don't assume that you deliberately tranquilize. Your deliberation is not to use words, concepts, ideas, and not to let the mind wander here and there. These are the things that you have to uh, you have to train yourself not to do. And that way you allow tranquility arise naturally and your mental formations feeling and perception naturally become tranquil so you experience while experiencing this you train you train not to let the tranquility dis be disturbed by various things that is again training. So in this section you have training. You train experiencing rapture and breathe in and so forth. You can see in all this you train. And then let us go and see uh, what we do in this. Uh, I'll remove this. Okay. Vedana su Vedana su Vedana nya tarang bhikkave evam vadami yadidang asasa pasasa nang sadukang manasikarang Tasmatiya bhikkave vedana su vedana anupasi Tasmin samaye bhikkave vedana viharati atapi sampajano satima vinayi loke abhigya domana sang. Since you don't understand Pali, I read it in English. 
I say thus, I say that this is certain feeling among the feelings, namely giving close attention to in-breathing, in-breathing and out-breathing. That is why on that occasion a bhikkhu abides contemplating feeling as feeling, ardent, fully aware and mindful, having put away covetousness and grief for the world. Now, this part explains how we develop rapture and pleasure and tranquility and awareness in the feeling without letting it be disturbed. How? Buddha said, inhaling and exhaling, giving attention to inhaling and in-breathing and out-breathing, is also called a feeling, among feelings. Now, when you breathe in and out, you cannot stop feeling of the breath. You cannot stop feeling of the breath. It happens very naturally, although it becomes subtler and subtler and subtler. Even the subtlest states, it is the feeling. Now that feeling, in order to have that feeling, uh, one has to train oneself in a very special way. How? What is the special way? Ardent. That means with the deep commitment to make effort to overcome defilements. Ardent means eff making effort to overcome defilements. What are the defilements? Covetousness and grief. Ardent, make effort. Covetousness and grief. Covetousness is the wish or desire for something that does not belong to you, that belong to somebody else you have, wish to have it. That is called covetousness. And then you have to get rid of that. And then fully aware. Fully aware of what? Fully aware of this feeling. Perceptions and feeling. Uh, it's a very committed, dedicated uh, attention that you have to have in order to experience that feeling and perception, fully aware. And then mindful. Here yeah, mindful, mindfulness always mean one thing. That is seeing something rising and falling. Now, these feelings that you experience rises and falls at a, such a high speed that you cannot isolate them. They change so quickly, rise and fall so quickly that you cannot isolate them. But when you pay full, total, undivided attention, your mind, of course, your mind is very sharp. There is nothing faster than the mind. That very high-speed mind can see these high-speed changes. And that thing is called mindful, mindfulness. And you do that having put away covetousness and grief. What is the grief for the world? What is the grief? 
grief is dhomanas. <coughs> uh, dhomanas means disappointment. Uh, grief when we when somebody <coughs> passes away, you 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 grieve. That grief is caused by the attachment to the person who passed away or something that you lost, something you love something very dearly, very close to your heart, when you lose that you grieve, grieve for the world. Here for the world means uh, not outside world, but yourself. You can grieve something that you lose within yourself. <clears throat> what do you lose? Your rapture, pleasure, tranquility, all this appear and disappear very quickly. Each time they appear and disappear, there can arise grief in you. You are not grieving for anything outside yourself. But whatever you are, you love, you desire, you cling to, when they change, disappear, you have a grief. This grief is very, very subtle grief. What do you see then, uh, see that you are losing? We will go to the next slide to see that, but I don't think I can have time to explain it, but I can mention it. <clears throat> so I said, this is the experience of jhana, first jhana. In the first jhana, you have overcome five hindrances and naturally they are replaced by five mental factors. They are called jhanic factors. Five hindrances are greed, hatred, sleepiness, drowsiness, restlessness and worry and doubt. Five jhanic factors are initial thought, sustained thought, uh, joy or rapture, pleasure and concentration. These are the five jhanic factors. Now, there are three characteristics of purity of practice as the beginning of the first jhana. Three characteristics of purity of practice. What are the purity? The mind is purified of its obstructions. Hindrances are obstructions. Ignorance is obstruction. And uh, all unwholesome mental states are obstructions. We mentioned this earlier in our earlier talks. Once you overcome them, your mind is pure. So this is one characteristic. The mind is purified of its obstructions. Through purification, the mind arrives at the center. That means center uh, of, uh, uh, center state of equipoise, which is the sign of tranquility. Now, through purification of the mind, arise at the center, that is the your uh, sort of middle point, equipoise, of which is the sign of tranquility. The sign, the center is the sign of tranquility. Uh, you see, we mentioned the word tranquilizing, and that tranquility, tranquilizing, is 
uh, its noun tranquility and the purification of the mind is a sign of tranquility you don't you cannot have tranquility without mind is pure and then because of having arrived that at that consciousness enters into the state state means to the first jhana first jhana hence these states are called good in the beginning and end out with characteristics now good in the beginning what are the characteristics that is called dasa lakkhana ten characteristics what are the ten characteristics overcoming five hindrances and arousing five mental jnanic factors these are the ten characteristics dasa lakkhana sampanna in pali but uh, i don't want to go into pali but uh, lak the word uh, Uh, lakkana uh, is enough that's a lakkana sampanna i think friends uh, i continue these talks uh, next week and on based on what i said today you can ask me questions tomorrow okay just remember this If, you are, if any of these things is not clear to you, mark it now and ask me questions tomorrow. Okay? Now we go to our con- uh, meditation. Uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Let us begin now meditation, and we recite our metta. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, May all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world. a heart of boundless loving friendliness above below and all around unobstructed without hatred or resentment whether standing walking sitting lying down or in a awake one should develop this mindfulness this is called divinely dwelling here not falling into erroneous views but virtuous and endowed with vision Through no wind desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. Okay, let us continue our practice.
by means of this meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish, may I jo always, join always with the wise, until the time I attain Ibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, friends, <coughs> you may continue your meditation as long as you like, but let me conclude this session with uh, my regular aspiration, metta wish for all beings. We begin with people in hospitals taken care of by nurses, doctors, hospital staffs, risking their lives, dedicating their energy and skill to help these people out of compassion. May they continue this uh, patience uh, in their recovery and return to normal health and continue Dhamma practice and attain liberation from psychic suffering. All those doctors, nurses, and hospital staffs who are helping them in many different ways to bring them back to their normal health. May they continue their compassionate service and continue practice Dhamma and attain liberation. And those who grieve their departed ones, beloved ones who have departed, May they be free from their grief and return to normal health and continue Dhamma practice. May those who are in various places undergoing various uh, pains and suffering due to wars, discriminations, poverty, and so forth, may they find peace and happiness solace and comfort and practice have uh, find time to find time to practice Dhamma meditation and liberate from samsaric suffering. May all those whose categories I have not mentioned, may they all be well, happy and peaceful and liberate from samsaric suffering. I think that is end of uh, our this morning session. Thank you. Thank you, Bante. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Okay, wish you peace, happiness, and solace and comfort. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Bye. And we'll have it.